I'm Larry Menti. Coming up next on Jersey Matters, we're going to talk to the top announced Republican candidate for New Jersey governor. Also, there is a train exhibit in North Jersey that's on the brink of extinction. We'll tell you why. And are we close to having to pump our own gas in New Jersey? Those stories and a whole lot more because Jersey Matters. Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. We are taping the show this week at the State House in Trenton because the assembly is in session and one of its members is an official candidate now for governor. Republican Jack Cetarelli from Somerset County. Sir, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Larry. Good to see you again. And I know we've talked about you running for governor before, but now that you're officially a candidate, I'm going to offer you what we do to every candidate, and that is just to tell the voters a little bit about yourself and why they should vote for you, why you'd make a good governor. Well, I'm very, very determined to take this state in an entirely different direction, a new direction, not just with our politics, but with our policies. I'm determined to make this state a better place to live, work, and retire. I'm determined to make this state a better place to do business. Um, I'm not pleased with where we are and where we're going. And I feel very confident in my candidacy and my ability to get it done. Now, you uh, had some negative things to say recently about um, Governor Chris Christie, another Republican, giving him a D for his time in office. Are you running against him? Oh, I don't know if I'm running against him. I'm just trying to show the people in New Jersey who I am. Some people say I've been critical. I think I'm just being honest. And when I've made those comments, I haven't made them as a Republican or a legislator. I've made him as a citizen of New Jersey. He's my governor. The only other official candidate in the Republican side is a businessman and an actor that we've talked to named Joe Rulo. He doesn't think that you are qualified to run because you didn't support Donald Trump in his candidacy for president. He thinks you should drop out because of that. I didn't support Hillary Clinton. I thought some of her conduct was criminal. There are some moral failings of Donald Trump along the way during his candidacy. Before anything, I'm a father of four children. And I thought that uh, her conduct and some of his comments provided a teachable moment. And, and that's not a disqualifier, that you don't support the top of your ticket? Uh, I don't think it is. I don't think it is. No family, political or biological, is perfect. Uh, the Republican Party's had some lumps. Here's the good news. He's now our president. I'm going to do everything I can to see him be successful. I think it's a very exciting development, by the way, that it's a Republican in the White House, it's a Republican Senate, and it's a Republican House of Representatives. No gridlock. Time to get things done, and I'm and, confident we will. And a Republican relationship with all of that would be helpful to the state. Oh, without a doubt. And anybody that knows me knows that I move on. And if Donald Trump has demonstrated anything, he moves on too. He's interviewed Mitt Romney. What Mitt Romney had to say about Donald Trump was way more than Jack Cetarelli. It was interesting. I talked to somebody else who was considering a run for the Republican nomination for governor, um, John Bramnick, and he said he's going to wait because he wants to see what Chris Christie is going to do. And when I asked to explain that, he said because then Kim Guadano would be in as governor and she gets a head start and it would change the dynamics. I'm not sure if I'm not going to run because of that, but I still want to see what's going to happen. You did not wait. Does that change your equation if Chris Christie were to step down and Kim were to take over? It does not. When I made this decision, I factored into the calculus a number of different scenarios, one of which was Chris Christie leaving early and Kim Guadagno being governor. It changes nothing. I believe in my candidacy, I believe in my platform, and I believe the Republican Party owes it to itself to have a choice come the June primary. Kim Guadagno, would she be a, uh, a good acting governor? Would you uh, applaud her taking over? She wouldn't be a bad governor. I think I'd be better. You recently criti criticized the mayor of Jersey City, Steve Fulop. Now, they, he, was, he was coming out and raving about the fact that they have, haven't raised taxes and that Moody uh, improved their rating, and you took that as an opportunity to criticize him. Why? Because I think he's very, very short-sighted in rubbing salt into the wounds of New Jerseyans around this state that pay for his school system. We should all celebrate the revitalization and the renewal that's taking place, the economic uh, vitality of Jersey City, but it's time to get off the state aid. No aid was ever meant to be a subsidy in perpetuity. So if things are so great in Jersey City, stop depending on the taxpayers of New Jersey to fund your school system. Yeah, and you said this is what's wrong. Jersey City is exactly what's wrong with the school funding system as it stands right now. That's right. The state aid provided to pay for any community schools is supposed to be a bridge until that community can stand on its own. Jersey City, 
Hoboken, these communities can now stand on their own. It's time for their state aid to be reduced. Instead, they seem to be doing everything possible to keep the current aid while celebrating all the renewal that takes place there. It's an insult to the taxpayers of New Jersey. Let's stay on this topic for a second. I want to get back to the political infighting with, with Steve Fulop, but a lot of people have tried to come up with solutions for this. Steve Sweeney has something where he wants to put a blue ribbon commission together, but then after that, the legislature has to say, you're going to accept this, whatever they say, to take their votes out of the equation, which has been the problems in the past. Uh, the speaker at Prieto has said, that's a non-starter, we have to have a say in this. Do you follow either of their plans? Nobody wants their ox gourd. My problem with Steve Sweeney's approach is we're in agreement, by the way, that the current school funding form formula is terribly flawed and blatantly unfair. His proposal is too long for me. There are communities that cannot afford to wait. Hoboken gets seven and a half million dollars more than it should, year over year over year. Yet towns like Manville get nine million dollars less than they should. They're sacrificing library space to create more classrooms because they're underfunded. We don't need a blue ribbon panel. We know what the problem is. Let's fix it. No, I think his, uh, no, I don't want to speak for him, but I think what he's saying is the only way to take self-interest out of this is to get an independent panel and to force people to accept it. That doesn't is it logical to you? It is logical, but it's the second best option. We have a gubernatorial election next year. Let's make this issue the number one issue because it is the number one issue in New Jersey. And whoever wins based on their platform, let that be the mandate. In my mind, again, Sweeney's proposal just takes too long to effectuate the policy. Manville cannot afford to wait. Oh, I understand. I think, I think everybody sees the problem. And I'm going to push back just for one second on the timing of this. So you put together a, 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 a Blue Ribbon Commission to, to settle this. How long would that take? And would it take longer than a gubernatorial election and then you getting into office or somebody getting into office and then dealing with this? That, that sounds like a couple of years against a year. It takes a couple of years. And Either way, though, right? Yes. I mean, listen, it's not a bad option. I just don't think it's the best option. And here's the other thing. Who knows what that Blue Ribbon panel is going to conclude? Every legislator knows what's wrong with the school funding formula. And they don't want to deal with it specifically because they don't want to take the money away from their district. That is correct. So what they keep talking about is full funding. Let's make all 600 districts whole. Well, wait a second. There's 200 of the 600 districts that are getting more money than they should. So when we talk about making everybody whole, that sounds great. I don't know where that windfall comes from, quite frankly, when you look at the projections for state revenues. The fair thing to do is take the 200 districts that are overfunded and have them reduced. Let me get back real quickly before we go to break and get back to this fight with Stephen Fulop. His spokesperson came out and said that, uh, made it very personal about you and said you, have, you don't have a legislative accomplishment. Maybe you should worry more about that than what we're doing in Jersey City. So I give you the opportunity to respond and give your legislative accomplishments. One of the reasons why I'm running for governor is because I haven't been able to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. I came to the state legislature five years ago to reform school funding to reform property taxes, to reform public workers' benefits, to reform our tax code. That ain't going to happen by a freshman or sophomore in the minority in the state legislature. It just isn't. So we have a deep bench in Somerset County. Someone can backfill my assembly seat, which I've decided to give up to run for governor, to tell the people of New Jersey how I'm going to fix this state. I'm confident in my candidacy. When we come back, we will continue our conversation with the Republican gubernatorial candidate for governor, Jack Cettarelli, when Jersey Matters continues.